Hi everyone, welcome back to Off The Cuff Clarinet, a YouTube web series devoted to all things related to the clarinet and clarinet playing. In this video, we're going to continue talking about intonation, and if you haven't watched my previous video about intonation and sort of where to adjust the instrument and what notes we should be checking, I would suggest check watching that first and then kind of come back to here. In this video, specifically I'll be talking about how do we work on intonation using drone pitches. So I've already played about at least 20 minutes. I've actually warmed up this morning and have gone through and gotten my instrument adjusted to the right locations at the barrel and at the uh, between the upper and lower joints. And I've checked those with the tuner. So now we're gonna talk about how do we actually work on intonation in a more general sense, not just calibrating individual notes. So we could you know, use the tuner and play a note and say, Oh, the, you know, the arrow's to the right, so that means I need to relax the embouchure slightly to bring that note so it's actually in tune. But you don't always get to have a tuner on your stand, and sometimes, you know, what's, what looks correct on this can actually be wrong in the context of what music you're playing. So what I really like to do is do a lot of work with the drone pitches, and what I mean by that is having a note sounding, you know, there's a lot of tuners, tuners or I actually use my metronome, or apps on your phone and get it to sound a pitch and then see if you can get that note to sound in tune based on this using our ears rather than our eyes. So in this case we're going to use concert F and what we'll do first is check all of our written G's so our concert F sounding notes and I like to do this at, at a mezzo forte volume first. So what I discovered is that most of those were pretty close. The shall emoji and the throat tone G were a touch higher. I was putting them a touch higher than they should be. The clarion G on the top of the staff was really sharp. And then the altissimo G, at least that fingering I used this time, the sort of overblown B finger with some extra notes added, that was a little flat. So what I'm gonna do now is go back and do all of those different octave Gs again and see if I can get them closer right off the bat. And the idea is that we're learning to make these adjustments faster and faster and not actually either not correcting enough and sometimes you actually overcorrect and that last G for instance was I put it a little too low. I was anticipating that I needed to lower it and I went too far. But we want to be able to make these adjustments as quickly as possible. Eventually you want to just kind of know where each note falls in terms of your embouchure and your voicing instead of having to you know, be out of tune at the start and adjust, you just want to make that a habit. It's like anything else. You have to do it consistently and repeatedly to build that habit into your voicing. So after I have worked on the exact note I'm tuning, what I like to do then is add the fifth. So the fifth note of that scale. So we were, we've been doing G's or concert F's, and now we'll be adding in D's or concert C's. And we'll be listening to see if we can make those those concert, those concert C's in tune as well as the concert F's. <laughs> So 
So there's some work to do and they're actually picked this specific note, I actually picked a G to work on because the Ds tend to be really out of tune regardless of which octave. You know, this fourth line D tends to be really sharp. The altissimo D tends to be pretty sharp as well. So I like to um, do that here to demonstrate how we can try and adjust. So knowing that this, both of these Ds were pretty, pretty sharp. Now as I go back and do it again, I'm gonna try and anticipate that correction. And that time was a lot better. And if you do this, you know, and you don't just do one note, you pick different notes and do this each day. As you continue to do this, you're going to find that you'll just get used to how certain notes feel to play into and you know you're gonna have to, you know, try and play that fourth line D lower. Or for instance, or another example of the thumb F tends to be flat, so you may have to get used to voicing that a little higher. So we've done the sort of first note and the fifth note of the scale. And what I like to do next is add the third note and specifically the third note of the major scale. So we've been doing G's and D's, now we'll add B natural in the middle. And the major third can be pretty tricky to do because it actually has to be flat and actually 14 cents flat on the tuner to be in tune with the drone pitch we're working with. So sometimes as that, depending on the note, it can be really hard to get it that low, but we wanna try and strive for that. And listen for again, when the beats stop between notes or when the note just sort of feels the most resonant quality to it, like it's really blending with the drone pitch. So we'll be doing G, B, and D. through that yeah those those thirds are really hard and I'm anticipating it and it's still not quite enough sometimes so we'll go back and do it again that um, that shall you mo B is especially tricky to get in tune so what I'm doing for a lot of these is actually sort of shading some open tone holes with my fingers and that's really topic of another video but um, just kind of an introduction to that here <laughs> So you keep going through that process of root third, fifth, and you can actually change it and do the minor third if you want. The minor third has to be high, actually about 16 cents sharp to the tuner to sound in tune with the drone pitch. But if you do this for about you know 20 minutes a day, it really helps improve your overall intonation and your sound quality as well. I find that a lot of us when we do this, we discover that we're generally sharp on everything and this forces us to sort of relax our embouchure and we get not only an in, more in tune sound, but a more resonant and more full sound quality as well. And again, don't just do one note because then you're only working on um, a few different pitches. And if we actually go to, if we went to D, we'd find that those concert A's, those B naturals that we were having to adjust low to the F, we actually don't have to adjust quite as much. We just aim for the middle. But yeah, do different notes, different days, and if about 20 minutes or a half hour of this type of practice makes a huge difference in our playing, and it makes it much easier not only to play um, with a pianist, but also in an ensemble where you're having to listen because you know 
you don't want to trust this thing all the time. If you are the person who constantly has this out on their stand in rehearsal and you're always saying, well, I am right. My, you know, my light is green on this. That's a really quick way to become pretty unpopular in rehearsal. So always tune with your ears instead of, you know, your eyes. I hope you found this video about working with drone pitches and intonation helpful. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment on this video or reach out on social media. Be sure to subscribe to this channel and happy practicing.